Write in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with another collection video. Um, so this is my gaming setup. It's probably I've still got some work to do on it. Um, these shelving units either side of the TV are actually just temporary cheap ones because um, uh, my previous setup got a little water damaged at one stage um, and I need to build something that's a little bit more suitable but these cubes do okay for the consoles at the moment and I've got a cabinet underneath there plus I've got I put various ones out on this table which I move around but anyway back to the focus of this video this is my SG-1000 SC-3000 collection. So we'll start off with the hardware. So obviously the first thing is fairly obvious. We have um, an SG-1000 Mark III, uh, which is a great unit because it'll play all of the SG-1000 uh, games, both the card and the cartridge games, plus it'll also play the Japanese um, Master System games as well. Not that I have very many of those. Uh, this is mainly about the earlier models, the SG-1000, SC-3000. So this is, I've got one original joypad for it. And I have, um, this is the uh, SC-3000 Survivors Multicart Mark II. Um, as you can see by the oh, version 1.4 down there. Um, it doesn't have a case at the moment. It's actually a funny story that I've had a Mark uh, a previous version of the cartridge for ages and ages and ages and I finally found a um, duplicate cartridge that I was prepared to take apart to use as a case and pretty much two weeks later this one got released and offered to me so um, on the screen there we have Girls Garden um, and interestingly the, um, the colours on the um, SG-1000 look a little uh, darker than the MSX. It's interesting. There's quite a few games that cross over. This is Girls Garden. This is an exclusive uh, for the console, so I thought it'd act as a good example uh, running on the machine. So anyway, that's my main unit that I use for playing um, SC1000 and S sorry SG1000 and SC3000 games. Um, but before that, I also had um, a SC3000H which is a 60, well, 48k um, RAM model, um, 32k ROM, and a full travel keyboard. Uh, so basically it has um, 32k of normal system RAM, um, and um, more, it's basic cartridge. Um, doesn't have any RAM in it. It's actually interesting how the, the, why there are so many basic cartridges for the system. Um, and 16k of that RAM is video RAM. And then you have uh, the very, very nice SC3000 original model. Um, what I might do, rather than unboxing these on the video, I might include some pictures at the end of them out of their boxes. Um, very nice model, uh, rubber keys. This unit came out uh, in my local town only just after I had bought my um, Spec Video 318. Um, so I was immediately drawn to it, and possibly if I had have seen it sooner, I may have even bought this one instead of the Spectre video. Um, probably mainly because of the first games that I played on it, uh, which were Congo Bongo and uh, Star Jacker, which we'll get to in a minute. Now I have, I don't have a lot of accessories, there are a few specific um, SG-1000 accessories. This one is by a third party, it's an ASCII stick, so as you can see it is specifically for the SG-1000 systems, so it has the proper button layout, it's not a bad stick. Um, obviously, um, normal mass system controllers will work on this as well. Now, where's the collection? So, I have an almost full set of titles, so it's in this little shelf here. There wasn't a huge library brought out. Um, probably, I am missing, I think, about eight titles in 
total from the main game set. There are more up there, top there, which we'll get to in a minute. See those ones with blue writing on the right hand side? They're educational software. Um, and um, I'm, um, yeah, I don't think anybody actually knows <laughs> the full list of those, so it's a little hard to know when the collection is complete. But as far as the other titles, I, I know I'm fairly close, so um, I'll get in a slightly better position, and I do apologise in advance for wobbly cam, but we'll be, um, I'll have to get up on a step ladder and we'll work our way through. So pause for a sec while I get ready. Okay, so our first shelf. So here is an example of what a um, SG-1000, SC-3000 cart looks like on the inside. Um, and um, this is basically a Mahjong cartridge, uh, which I had um, three copies of. So I've actually got another full Mahjong copy boxed, if anybody's interested. Um, and this is where the shell ended up. I put a proper shell around my um, original multi-cart. You've just got to put a hole in here for the, um, the reset button. doesn't have a top label, uh, but neatens it up quite nicely. Also have a boxed card catcher. So the SC3000 does not have a card slot, and neither does the original model SG1000. The, the Mark II and the Mark III, which I have, um, have a slot for cards. So all this is is basically a cartridge. You plug it in, and then you can plug the cards into that. So it's almost like an adapter. Okay. Um, there's the label from my new Survivor's card. Now, and the, it is interesting. There are actually two versions of Load Runner. Um, this is the cartridge version. Um, and it's actually quite good, they've got numbers on them, so it makes it um, very easy to think. They've got quite nice art, um, so this is one of the uh, cartridges that do not have uh, the box for. Uh, then we have Basic 2A, there are about four different Basic cartridges. Um, I do have the appropriate Basic cartridges in, in the two computers that I just showed you. Um, I think this one, uh, possibly, is the one that you bought, and there is a keyboard that you can buy for the SG-1000, thus turning it into a computer with this basic cartridge. Uh, next we have Othello. So you can see the labels. This one's actually fairly hard to come by. Uh, obviously, no box. Uh, then we have Space Invaders, which is quite a capable version of Space Invaders. Not a hard to get title, but uh, well worth getting if you're a fan of Space Invaders. Uh, Pachinko 2. So there are a couple of Pachinko games. And that's one of them. Uh, Monaco GP. You'll see a bit of a theme here. Some of these titles are obviously continued on and the sequels are actually uh, actually came out on the Master System itself. Take the next two out. So I haven't got enough if we go to order anyway. So we have uh, this one here, which I believe is a Mahjong title. It's the other Mahjong title. And Champion Tennis. Not focusing that well. There we go, it's a little better. Now, I have a couple of loose, so there are also these little card holders, so I've got one of those. In that I actually got a whole, I actually, this was full when I got it, but I've upgraded a few of them, and you can see the person wrote in them. So, sorry, other way around. So, we have uh, elevator action. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this one-handed. Um, obviously wouldn't mind a complete inbox one of those. So this person's um, handwriting makes them difficult to see. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to... There we go. Juggling hands. So there's the art on that one. And it's actually quite a good version of Elevator Direction. Pretty much the version on MSX that I have is identical to that one. Um, and then we have uh, Pitfall 2. Which is... A, it's not the same as Pitfall 2 on the um, Atari 2600. Um, it's actually um, more like 
uh, the, the later Pitfall game after that one. To do some more um, gameplays. Uh, one more in that's in here is Wonder Boy, which is a very good version. Um, and the version that's on a Hue card on the MSX is uh, pretty much the same. This one, I think, got slightly better artwork though on the on the cartridge. So that's my loose ones. So another card. Um, so the game, the Black Onyx. We do have some screenshots, which is actually a dungeon crawler, and it uses 3D. You know. Um, within limits 3D. So inside each one of the, I'll just I'm not going to open every single one, I'll open this one so you can see what they're like. Because they do have delicate tabs. So you get the card in a plastic cover and you have the manuals. And the manuals are all in this blue and white colouring. Not many pictures inside. So that's the black onyx. I haven't actually had that one for very long. Uh, and this is also a recent edition. This is Kendo, which is obviously a, a Kendo stick fighting game. Um, Ninja. This one, this game is really, really good. I'm just trying to think. It's Ninja. Oh, I may have to put a text over this, I can't remember. And the sequel uh, for this is on the Sega Mar system, and also a very good game. But this first version of it is a really, really good first version. And next we have uh, CISO. So it's a platform game. Uh, we have seesaws, which you can use to um, trap enemies and um, uh, disable them for extra points. It's actually quite a good fun game. Um, this is, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Gull Clave, which is a horizontal shooter, shooter which is actually quite a nice um, shoot em up. So that's all the card games in that section. Right, next we have uh, Zippy Race. I do have titles on this, English titles on the side as well. Zippy Race, which is an over the top motorbike racing game. Uh, Sinbad Mystery. Took me a little while to find this one, which is a Shudo 2D 3D game. A little bit like Congo Bongo in some ways because of the um, you know the 3D maze displayed on a 2D plane. Uh, quite a good fun game, quite hard. Uh, this has quite a long name. <laughs> I'm probably going to have this does not have the English name there. Um, I'm going to have to um, flash that one up again for you guys because I can't remember it off the top of my head. That, this is a strange, strange game. Right, I'll pop these back. Okay, so next shelf, uh, packed to the gills with my card games, so we'll cover the um, cartridge ones I've slipped in here. So we've got Augus, which pretty much um, is the prequel to Transbot on the Master System. And it's not a bad little shooter in its own right, it's got some quite nice effects uh, for the system. Uh, borderline. Where you have your, it's basically you're a jeep. Um, you have to go around and um, dodge all the enemies and shoot them and make your way through um, a bit of a maze. Quite a good fun game. All right, let's go through the cards. So we have uh, so that's championship golf. Oh, I should show you the back. They do have pictures on the back. Not a bad little golf game. 
Uh, so this is the card version of Zippy Race. Uh, no difference other than a different screenshot on the back. Then we've got Championship Boxing. I have the MSX version of this and it's identical. Um, this is um, it's Astro Fighter, isn't it? That might be wrong. Greatness of an editing. I actually really like this game. This is different from the MSX version. Um, this one only has this particular plane, whereas the MSX one actually scrolls left and right a little bit as well. Um, now the SD1000 only has 2K of RAM. It's more than the Coleco though, so it, does, it gives you a little bit more work RAM. Um, other than that, the system is pretty much identical to the Coleco. And it's has built into it. Um, now this is uh, Karate um, something Wang, but it's a, it's like um, like the game Kung Fu basically in the arcades, and it's actually quite a good fun game. It's very very hard though. Right, another. Um, Shooting game 3D, I think it's Zoom. There's a number after that as well. Yeah, 909, Zoom 909. So like a, um, a little bit like Buck Rogers as far as the trench part is concerned. Ah, now this is Top Lifter. A really, really good version. Uh, pretty much identical to the MSX version and a really good, fun, playable version. Uh, this is um, Penguin Land, or I'm not sure if it's called Doki Doki Penguin Land, but Penguin Land this is the original version. So it's the so the Penguin Land that is on the uh, Mars system is the sequel to this one. Uh, very similar gameplay where you've got to try and get the egg uh, down the bottom of the maze um, without breaking the egg and or without getting caught by the enemies. Really good fun game. Quite hard. I know not very good at that one. Um, Droll, that's it, sorry, took me another couple of seconds. So this is Droll, so it's a side-scrolling, um, sort of like platform, uh, find all the stuff, shoot the enemies sort of game, it's quite good fun. So that's Droll. It's also on the MSX. Um, I'm really having a bad name day today. I only thought it, this this is on the MSX as well. It has a couple of different versions. Um, I'm going to say it wrong. If I say it wrong, I'll flash up the titles. It's Hustle Yummy or something like that. So you've got to be careful with some of these. I'll just leave that there for the minute. Now this is Bank Panic. Very good version of Bank Panic, and once again, the version on the Mars system is the sequel to this one. So obviously, same game with diff more enhanced graphics. Um, I've lost the name again, um, but it's actually quite a um, an interesting game. You've got to get your way across the river, um, and you can slide the pieces. And they can um, they can match and bolt together. Right, we have the card version of Load Runner, and it is a very good version of Load Runner. Lots of really cool levels. Uh, and then we have Hero. Now, interesting enough, this version of Hero. Um, uses slightly different graphics to the MSX version and the Coleco version. Um, it was made a little bit later. Um, so the graphics of some of the um, items and things like that are different. But it's still made by Activision, um, although I believe uh, developed under license. 
Um, so it's quite interesting that it is different, slightly different to the other versions of Hero because Activision was quite consistent in their ports. So it was quite a surprise when I discovered that was a little different. Uh, championship Ice Hockey. Off the cover. Not a bad version of Ice Hockey too. Um, Moto GP2, I think. Was it? No, Outrun 2. Sorry, I'm talking about Outrun 2. This one's covers a little thing. And this is Bomb Jack. Absolutely fantastic version. Uh, covers a little ratty, but I'm, it took me ages to find a copy of this. It does well considering the system's limitations. And, um, and plays really well. Has quite nice music as well. Uh, well worth playing that one. All right, I'll tidy up and go to the next shop. All right, here's our next shelf. So on top we have uh, the Mahjong game, which is the most common game on the system. You can get this for virtually nothing. Uh, I didn't pay that much yet for it. <laughs> And this is a nice box copy. I have another complete box copy if somebody is after that. Um, which I'm not going to tear down just to put a cover around my thing. I'll find a loose cartridge for that. So we've got GP World. Quite a nice into the screen racing game with a few different courses. Then we have Golgo 13. Um, sort of like a shooting game uh, where you shoot into the screen uh, no light phaser for this system uh, but actually quite a good fun game um, Exerian a really good version of Exerian pretty much the same as the MSX version plays really really well uh, a good fun game and if you've got the system highly recommended to uh, get it and play it then you have the cartridge version of Championship Boxing. So there is a bit of double ups with the titles. I do put different screenshots on the back. Once again, Championship Soccer cartridge version. So screen scrolls up and down. Right, this is Hustle Chummy. Quite a good fun uh, mouse game. We run around the platforms and uh, collect things while avoiding the enemies and there are, you know, um, jump down pipes and things like that. Uh, good friend um, Klaus has been trying to convert this to the ColecoVision. Uh, I believe he's finished it now. Uh, now a really good game, Flicky. Uh, really good fun game. Um, and you know, um, obviously simpler graphics, but plays pretty much the same as the Mega Drive version, just with simpler graphics. So Flicky, uh, Girls Garden, a title exclusive to the system, a um, bit of a strange title, but it actually is quite a good fun game. Um, you've got to go around and um, collect the flowers and or make the flowers grow while avoiding the bears and and everything like that. It's actually a really good game. Right, Champion Pro Wrestling cartridge version. So I said some of the ones I'm missing are just the associated card version of the cartridge. Right, so that's all on that shelf. So we'll go up to the next shelf. We're starting to get a bit higher now. So our next shelf has um, some PAL titles. So the ones with the red writing are actually the ones released in PAL territories. There were not many as many games released on cartridge. Um, the system was actually sold quite extensively in Australia, so you can find usually find an SE 3000H with a full travel keyboard, that's the most common one, and even a 3000 with a rubber keyboard um, quite easily, and some of these games are more common than others. Uh, there's obviously one, so the Japanese ones ha were in large boxes as well, so this is the one Japanese title there, that's Champion Baseball. So this is an earlier release in a bigger box. And the smaller boxes are the later releases. 
that's a Safari Hunter. And these boxes are a gatefold, like this. There's nothing exciting inside other than the manual. Uh, Safari Hunter, another one where you wander around the maze um, getting the animals. Sorry, get a bit of reflection there. Now, Congo Bongo, this is the game, uh, the very first game I played on the system. So it's a semi 3D version of Donkey Kong in a way. That's where it harks back to, where you've got to try and get up to Kong at the top. Out of all the versions of Congo Bongo, this one handles the semi 3D part of it quite well and it's actually a little bit more playable than some of the others. Some of the others try and overdo and try and get the um, aspect ratio of the arcade game in on systems that can't really candle it. So a really good version. That drew me towards the system. So Yamoto. Which is a um, sort of a sea battle game where you've got to shoot well, dodge torpedoes um, and shoot the big ships and everything like that so that's not a bad game now this is the other game that drew me to the system Star Jacker I thought this game was absolutely fantastic it really is a, um, a very well done there is an actually a Star Jacker arcade game and it is actually a very well done version of the game you actually start out with all of your ships linked together in a formation um, and so you actually sort of start powered up, <laughs> but you can actually increase the um, the number of shots you're firing as well. Really good um, shooting of quite a bit of variety in it, and um, uh, not easy at first as you get used to it because it, it plays quite fast. But once again, highly recommended. Uh, one that I didn't know about back in the day, but this is Sega Flipper. So it's a pinball game. I would have loved this back in the day, and it's got quite. Uh, you know, a simple little table, but uh, I still would have played this heaps back in the day if I had it. Uh, Pop Flamer. Another title I didn't see back in the day, but another Australian release here. So, uh, another maze, avoid the enemies, um, get your collectibles and things like that. And uh, quite a good fun game with some, um, some uh, not too bad music as well. And next we have a pack car, so pretty much Pac-Man with a car. So the reflection with the black and everything like that. All screenshots are they're not exactly um, uh, clear on the back of the cover of the um, printout anyway. But not a bad little game where you go to go around the maze and collect all the dots and avoid the enemies. All right, we've got one more shelf to go. So I'm not going to hold the camera in that direction. I'll bring the ones down to you. So that's the titles up there. So these are all Japanese ones. So, um, oh, I do know the name of this one. It's escaping me. Uh, Mikey. That's it, Mikey. Uh, basically, you're in a um, in a school and you've got to play pranks so um, it's actually ends up being quite a good fun game just put that down there for a minute uh, then we have Zaxxon now this is not the same as the Coleco version and the MSX funnily enough actually has two versions of Zaxxon it actually has this version and the Coleco version uh, the graphics are slightly different uh, the ship the main ship is a little smaller um, and I believe this one came out later than that original uh, port for the ColecoVision because um, that version of Zaxxon was also brought out for the original Spectre video as well so time, as far as timelines go uh, I believe this one came out a little later um, it's just a little sharper, there's a little bit more to do as well um, and I think it nails the graphics a little bit better than the original ColecoVision but as I said, the MSX was lucky it got both versions although I don't have this version for the MSX Uh, so this is Hypersports, the only track and field Hypersports title to come out for the SG-1000. Um, I can't remember how many sports it's got on it though. It does have a few, so it's got trampolining. Um, oh, my memory's going to escape me at the moment, but it's actually not a bad version. So on the MSX there were three Hypersports cartridges. Um, 
um, and I believe for this one they're aiming for two. So on the M6, I think there's three sports per cartridge. I believe there's four sports on this one. Uh, then we have Safari Race, which is an into the screen racing game once again. Uh, not a bad little fun game. And then we have the Japanese version of Star Jacker. Yes, I don't normally get duplicates, but um, it, uh, you know it's got different screenshots and everything like that. But it is the same game. Uh, then we have N Sub. Which is a lot simpler sub game. Um, so you have a sub down the bottom and you've got to shoot the ships on the surface of the sea and the subs that go across and they drop depth charges at you. Uh, Sega Galaga. Not an easy title to get. And it's actually quite a capable version of Galaga, very similar to the Galaga version that's on the MSX. So it plays quite well. We have the other Mahjong title. I'm not sure which one is the more common one. And then we have these two, which are unusual. These are the educational titles. Uh, you really need... Oops. There's a spaceship falls down. I'll get that later. Um, you really need the keyboard add-on uh, for the SC-1000. So they really, these were really intended for the SC-3000 in Japan. Uh, obviously, they are in Japanese, so they are quite unplayable. So that's the first one, and I believe there may have been up to about 10 of these, but I'm not 100% sure. And here's the second one, sort of a history one maybe. So this is number nine. We've got very simple graphics, just text with a little bit of, a little bit of graphics. This was number four. So yeah, there could be anywhere up to ten of those. Um, so that's the main part of uh, my SG. 1000 SC 3000 collection. I do have uh, a number of uh, tape titles that were released by John Sands, who are the distributor in Australia. So I will get those set up in a better spot and we'll go through those. Right, so here are all the tape titles that I have released by John Sands in Australia. Um, I don't believe I have all of them, but I do have a fair few of them. A lot of them are more productivity oriented, but there are a couple of games. Um, okay, we'll just go through them. So, Satellite Subtraction, so educational title. Uh, Metric Mentals, WizKid Mental Arithmetic, uh, Super Tape One, lots of demos and so educational software. Flash Word One, Basic One Tutorial. Uh, Environoid Text Adventure, so an adventure game. Uh, Watch Me Draw. Dragon Quest, which is like chess, uh, keyboard learning program, learn the alphabet program, spelling tutor, uh, division tutor, let's type program, so the reflections is obviously going to be a pain, multiplication tutor, expense analyst program, addition tutor, Australian general knowledge tutor, and Australian geographic tutor. So John Sands actually made quite an effort at um, marketing this computer in Australia um, and I do believe they sold quite a few of them um, but other than those um, was it seven red titles I believe there may be another one that was released in Australia and there are there might even be ten that were released in Australia but I don't uh, I've got them in the Japanese form so I don't need to get the Australian ones um, so about 10 cartridges and these tapes, and I believe there are more tapes. Um, and as you notice, the, uh, the multi-cart is actually made by a gentleman in New Zealand, um, and it actually has all of the tape software on it, um, and all of these were released in New Zealand as well. So a very, very nice system, um, quite an interesting one to collect for. It's, it's, it 
has a lot of feelings of MSX and Spectre Video because obviously using the same graphics processor and similar architecture. Um, but there are a lot of original games that you don't find elsewhere and also a lot of games that are the versions before they became the versions that came out for the Sega Master System uh, which is another system that I really love so a very interesting system to collect for um, obviously the, the titles um, don't come up that often and you can only really buy them in Japan unless you can find the Australian ones of course um, and the Australian system is a good way to get started they're completely region free so you can start off with an Australian system and buy um, you know, a couple of Australian titles and things like that and then you can get some Japanese titles. Uh, this is with the, one of the SC3000 computers. And they'll run every single SG1000 game so you don't need to worry about it. You can get a card catcher, you can get the uh, card games. The, uh, the card games seem to be a little bit more common but other than the Mahjong titles for the, for the cartridges in Japan and you hunt around and you can find them. Um, they are starting to uh, I mean, you, you find the same titles again and again. Some of the more obscure titles uh, can take a bit of looking. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, that's another one of the collections that I really like. I obviously haven't had a t another title for it for quite a considerable amount of time. The multi-card is actually the last thing that I got for it, and probably the Kendo title before that. Um, what I'll do is I'll take some nice pictures of the two computers out of the box and um, I'll show those to you as we lead out today. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.